Valley Connection is brought to you by RPS Video Productions. This month's show is sponsored in part by The Image Creator with Jan Young. Phil's Auto Clinic, where caring makes the difference. Best known for her management series, Been There, Done That, successful speaker and business person Jan Young feels the keys to success are exceptional customer service and consistent advertising. During the housing crash of the 90s, we all had faith that eventually things would return to normal. Today, Valley residents are losing their jobs and homes, so our spending is based on fear this time around. My passion is to use my 40 years of experience to help local entrepreneurs become the success they dreamed of the day they opened their business. Learn more about Jan Young, The Image Creator, through their website, theimagecreator.com. Hi, I'm Phil. I'm a technician that hates acting, but as they say, it's not just about me. It's about our ASE certified master technicians, Ed Garcia and Steve Maldonado. It's about our hybrid battery rebuilder, Marco Sarvaio. It's about our friendly and helpful service advisors, Dan and Brian. It's about our Auto Club approved service. Check out our website for more at philsautoonline.com. Phil's Auto Clinic, where caring makes the difference. Welcome to this month's edition of the Valley Connection, where we spotlight our Valley's issues, concerns, and events. I'm Nancy Lopez. And I'm Cesario Hernandez. And Nancy, I have been out on a lot of Saturdays doing a you lot of have. fun things here in our Valley. And we want to tell you about one of them that I did, and that is going out to the Hemet Farmer's Market. Now this takes place right in downtown Hemet, right there on Harvard. And it's a place where you can get together with your friends and your family and walk through and see all the different things that all of the different vendors have there. It's a lot of fun. It is fun. And you also got to do something else on a Saturday. <laughs> That's right. It's been a little while since we've been out there, but we went out to the Western Science Center for Science Saturdays. Now these are great activities to do with the family. You take your kids out there and they get hands-on experiences mm -hmm. with lots of different science projects and stuff. A lot of fun. I know. I know some of my kids at school, they tell me about them. They, it's just a lot of uh, interesting exhibits and stuff that they get to do. Like mm -hmm. you say, a lot of hands-on. Well, I got to stay here in the studio, <laughs> Cesaria, and I got to sit down with Andrew Kotyak. Now, he is the mayor of San Jacinto, and there's some exciting things happening in the city of San Jacinto. So That's we right. got to sit down and talk about it. So you don't want to miss it or all the other fun things that we have for you. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back with more of the Valley Connection. Experience the story that moved the hearts and minds of our nation. Experience the pageantry and the spectacle that is Ramona. For tickets, go to RamonaBowl.com or call today. Come experience the Country Club at Soboba Springs. Beautiful fairways, immaculate greens, bunkers and tee areas ranging from 5,900 yards to over 7,100 championship yards. Whether you're looking for a round of golf with friends and family, tournament golf with your group or charity, banquet space for social affairs or wedding barber for that special day, the Country Club has something for everyone. Enjoy our signature restaurant, The May Stone, open daily for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The Country Club at Soboba Springs. Welcome back to the show. Now, Nancy, we're going to head down to the Hemet Farmer's Market where you can experience a lot of great food, a lot of wonderful entertainment, and just hometown family fun. For centuries, farmer's markets have brought people together, providing a centralized meeting place for communities to exchange goods and services, thoughts and ideas, and entertainment. They provide an environment where farmers can showcase the best of their locally grown fresh produce. Artisans can share their wares and crafts, and performers can showcase their talents. And now, we have our own farmer's market to enjoy, right here in downtown Hemet.
I'm here with Patricia Yapremian, organizer of the Hemet Farmers Market. And Patricia, what was the brainchild for this? Trying to bring life to the downtown Hemet area and support the local growers and crafters of Hemet. Now, how many vendors do you have here today and what kind of things are they selling? We have approximately 70 vendors right now. We have certified produce, we have fresh grown flowers, all local. We have uh, certified and organic honeys, organic eggs. Um, we have herbs, we have a local gentleman that uh, grows his own herbs and sells them so you can plant them in your own garden. And then we have homemade breads, um, food, crafts, local crafters, we have clothing and shoes, a little bit of everything, homemade candles. Sounds like a wonderful, wonderful assortment. Now then tell me, there's also quite a bit of entertainment here. Yes, we have a, a lady that comes every Saturday to play her harp. We have a flutist. We have a couple of local boys that play the guitar. And in the back of the, of the market, I have a, a DJ who plays music from the 50s. Wow, how exciting. So a little bit for everybody, huh? Yes, of all ages. And what I love about the market is that it's become a place where friends come on Saturdays. It's their destination to meet each other, to buy fresh local produce, and just have a fun, amusing day. Now, how did you come up with this location here? Well, I went before the city, and initially I wanted to go on Harvard Street. But um, one of the members, Steve Harding, suggested the North Harvard venue, and I had never even thought about it, but it is the best possible place that we could have chosen. Uh, the view in the back, I couldn't pay for. The mountains, the palm trees. I want to thank the city for all of their support, all of their guidance, and together we're going to build a nice downtown. That's my goal. Ran into Connie Boyington and her friend Boomer here. And what are you guys doing out here at the Hemet Farmer's Market? Buying Boomer cilantro for the week. Cilantro for the week. He loves cilantro. Yes, aren't, don't you, Boomer? Yes. Boomer weighs 14 pounds and he's 18 months old. And um, he's quite a mess at the house. He's litter trained and um, he has a big dog kennel he lives in and he goes outside every day and he plays and he's a great pet. Now Boomer's a Flemish giant. They are some of the largest rabbits of the rabbit species. I'm here with Steve Ray from Ray's Ranch of Temecula. And if you're like me, I suffer from local allergies quite a bit. And he was telling me that there are some real medicinal purposes to buying locally produced honey. Ray, tell me, what are some of the things here that we should look for in local honeys? Well, local raw and pasteurized honey is uh, really high in um, certain nutrients that uh, will keep your, your allergy levels down. I understand it's the pollens in the honey that actually give it its medicinal effects. Yeah, the bee pollen is really good for allergies. You'll generally feel uh, less congested and you'll have less respiratory problems. We've had a great time out here at the Hemet Farmer's Market. Look at all of these beautiful flowers and produce. There are things out here for everybody. Now be sure to join us out here every Saturday from 9 to 3. We're going to be right back with more of the Valley Connection right after this. And don't forget, there is ample free parking right next door to the market. Ramona Humane Society, we have adoptions seven days a week. 
We have cats, dogs, puppies, and kittens. We have rabbits, hamsters, anything for the liking. Come down and see who you can adopt and invite into your family. We also have the Ramona Clinic with low cost spay and neuters. We also have microchipping and vaccination so that you can take care of your pet when you get them home. Today we'd like to talk to you about microchipping your animals. Any animal can be microchipped and the benefit of being able to return the animal to its owner if it's running loose. When any animal is brought into the animal shelter, we scan them for a microchip and then call the company, find out who it belongs to, and we are able to call you at home so you can come and pick up your pet. It is a misconception that we're looking for animals to come into the animal shelter. We are looking to be able to move them back to the homeowners and be able to get them reunited with you. So please, go to any veterinarian of your choice and you can have your animal microchipped. If you do have a microchip in an animal that you've acquired, you can have it micro, uh, scanned and find out who the manufacturer is and be able to register with them and have your pet currently registered. And also make sure that you purchase a city license for your animals and it's another way of being able to have your animal reunited with you if your animal is running at large. Like to adopt, we're here seven days a week. Thanks and come and see us at Ramona Humane Society. Best known for her management series, Been There, Done That, successful speaker and business person Jan Young feels the keys to success are exceptional customer service and consistent advertising. During the housing crash of the 90s, we all had faith that eventually things would return to normal. Today, Valley residents are losing their jobs and homes, so our spending is based on fear this time around. My passion is to use my 40 years of experience to help local entrepreneurs become the success they dreamed of the day they opened their business. Learn more about Jan Young, The Image Creator, through their website, theimagecreator.com. And welcome back. Something you don't want to miss is the first Saturday of every month at the... At the Western Science Center for Science Saturdays. Now we got to go out there and we had so much fun. Take a look. Hi, we're out here at the Western Center for Science Saturday, and I'm joined by Mr. Paul Bailey, the Director of Educational Services out here. Is that correct, Paul? Did I get that right? Yeah, I think so. That pretty much covers everything that we do. <laughs> All right. Well, tell me just a little bit about Science Saturdays. Science Saturday is a program that we started, and it was an idea to be able to try to get science concepts um, to the elementary school kids because they don't have a ton of time in their classroom. They're so focused on math and English, and to really bring the kids out here, and we've got a great group of volunteers that helps out and we do fun games. I noticed a lot of the fun games that you guys have going on. Let's talk about some of the exhibits that you have out here. I love the snow, the Kiva blocks. I mean, there are a lot of fun things out here. Talk about some of your favorites. There's so many things and a lot of it's trying to break down the basics for the kids to be able to find out and to be able to become interested in what can be exciting, you know, get them involved with the science. The Kiva blocks are amazing because it's something that both the kids and the parents can do. It allows them to construct and to build towers as high as they can and also ramps and we um, have a new project that we're working on um, called um, construction and it allows the kids to be able to create things where the balls can roll down and through and the marble madness the kids absolutely love and of course the snow they like to make snow and I got to do this really neat thing called a Chinese now what, what was it called a Chinese Chinese spouting bowl and it what it does is it allows the kids to see resonance at work and it shows through the water and the kids rub on it and when they get to that right um, harmony um, right frequency it creates a resonance and you know, makes the water spout up right into their face, and it's pretty funny. Okay, so this is the Chinese um, spout, spouting bowl, and what we're going to do is, Courtney just wiped her hands, she's going to get them wet, and rub them together, and she's going to she's gonna go ahead and rub it, and the deep tone that you hear causes vibrations to come um, out of the bowl, and the vibrations hit each other, and the water shoots up. Now, I know that there's a lot of different activities here geared towards different age groups. About what age groups are really going to get the most out of these uh, projects out here? We focus on hitting kids um, anywhere between the ages of 6 and 12, but kids of all ages can come out and we definitely um, have activities geared for as young as 2 and 3. 
Oh, wow, my goodness. So real little ones can get into science also. What we wanted to do is make sure that they had an opportunity to come out with the whole family to be able to get, we have grandparents bringing out their grandkids, we have parents coming out with their families, and we didn't want it to be a situation where they felt like they had to leave the little ones at home just to be able to do this activity. So we have the chalk drawing, we have the Kiva planks, and we have coloring stations where the little kids can get something out of it too. And the wonderful thing is this is all done by volunteers, and this is all free, is that correct? Yeah, everything out here is free um, for them to come in. Um, we do all the activities in the classrooms that we have out here and also out on the hardscape. And the museum is still the normal cost to be able to get in, but somebody can come up to this activity. And it's all done through the volunteers and the support of the community. Now this is done on the first Saturday of every month, is that right? And usually what are the normal hours out here? We normally do 10 to 1. Um, that seems to work out the best to try to hit people either before and after lunch and get around nap time, but um, and allow them a chance to wake up in the morning. And we're right now working at 10 to 1, 3 hours, but we're hoping to be able to expand it and do it longer hours. But always check out the website at westerncenteredmuseum.org and always have the most current information. We had a great time out here at the Western Center. Remember, get on out here for the Science Saturdays. It's the first Saturday of every month, and the entire activity is free for everybody. Welcome to the Patio Plaza, home of the City of San Jacinto Chamber of Commerce. We offer a wide variety of businesses, organizations, and a restaurant to serve you. The Patio Plaza has been locally owned and operated since 1976, centrally located between Menlo and Esplanade, amongst the garden setting. Enjoy the experience of the Patio Plaza. And welcome back to the Valley Connection. And joining me now is the mayor of San Jacinto, Andrew Kotyuk. Thank you for being with us. You've never been on our show, so we're glad to have you with us. Thank you so much. We have a lot of celebrations that we're going to be talking about. But one thing I wanted to start off with is something that is very popular in our valley, an annual event, and that is the Ramona Outdoor Play. And I know that San Jacinto is going to be very involved with that this year. Why don't you tell us some of the activities that you're going to do? Oh, absolutely. We couldn't be more proud to be supporting Ramona, obviously Ramona Expressway and Ramona Boulevard that we have. But uh, the latest news that we have to share is, is that we are going to bring back the tradition of having a Ramona parade once again in the Valley to start off and kick off Ramona. It will be on the same weekend as the celebration of First Peoples Day, the Maystone Music Fest, and of course, the San Jacinto Chambers event at Estadio Mansion. Right. Now this parade is going to start at, where is it starting? So the, it's going to start in downtown San Jacinto on Old Ramona Boulevard, okay. and it will go to Estadio Mansion. Oh, and that date is going to be April? Yes, April 14th. April 14th. And so they'll have the first day celebration. Now that's normally at the Bowl, right? They have that at the Bowl? The first, or at First Peoples, I'm sorry, celebration. That will be at Farmer's Corner this year. Oh, okay. And the Maystone event will be at the uh, Hemet Theater. You know, they're revitalizing that, trying to bring that mm -hmm. back. And then uh, the San Jacinto Chamber will have an event at Estadio Mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, the parade will start at 10 a.m. in the morning, and so that will kick off the event. And the new Ramona trolley that we have will be going between all those locations to carry people throughout the valley to whatever site they want to be at. Oh, how wonderful. Now, I know there's some groups and organizations that got very involved this year with the bowl and doing some cleanup and sprucing up, getting ready for the play. Is that correct? Absolutely. Each year, it, it's wonderful to see different parts of the community come together. And this year, it was the Church of Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, they came together last week and over 200 volunteers came out to that location and they spent all morning uh, putting sod down, repairing uh, the thatch huts that they have, painting, 
you wouldn't believe the skilled labor that they brought with us. It was just a wonderful support in the community. We really appreciate what they did. There's so much work to do up there. I mean, it's such a big facility. There's always work to do, and to have that kind of help, I, I know, it was, must have been terrific. Now, um, we have some other celebrations we want to talk about. Teacher of the Year, right from the Senecino Valley Academy. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, it, it amazes me, even though how long I've been here, to see the leaders that we have here that's stepping up continuously. And so just recently uh, named uh, the California Charter School Teacher of the Year mm -hmm. was uh, Kelly Perez from the San Antonio Valley Academy. Oh. Out of the whole state of California, just uh, just amazes us. And that represents, of course, not just the school, but this whole community, what leaders oh. we have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, transportation. There's something going on with the Ramona Expressway, right? They're going to be expanding, is that correct? You're absolutely correct. Uh, as you know, transportation is probably one of the biggest pieces of uh, infrastructure to spur and push economic development. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're doing right now is looking at expanding from Sanderson to Eagle Drive, uh, Ramona Expressway to six lanes. And that's the first phase. The second phase will come a little bit later and that mm -hmm. will go all the way to um, a Saboba Road area in that region. But this first phase, it looks like we'll be moving forward this year. So this is a wonderful thing for our community. Mm -hmm. So that's going to start this year, the construction or? Um, so we expect to be out to bid, I would assume this year, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you also have something exciting about the foreign trade zone. Is that right? Yes, the foreign trade zone, if you don't know, uh, the benefits of this is that it brings in jobs into a region and uh, goods that normally would be taxed have a tax benefit. So there's a real incentive to bring jobs in. And there's different zones around Riverside County. One zone, Palm Springs zone, uh, has not been active. And so currently they're reactivating that zone and our own supervisors and the city, both cities, Hemming and San Sino, requested to be a part of that zone being reactivated. And it looks like, when I was last talking to the Department of Commerce, that that will be completed this year. So this year we should all be within a foreign trade zone and positioned to start attracting new jobs in. So that's very important. Kind of speaking about the economics, how is the foreclosures doing in San Jacinto with all the things that's going on, the economy? How are you doing? That is something that we monitor very closely because it tells us actively how we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that has dramatically decreased. And mm. so much so that we actually have some home builders coming out, repulling permits so that they have inventory uh, within the next six to 12 months, which is very positive really? news. Well, you don't hear that very often. <laughs> no, no. And, and you know, a really positive thing is, is that one of those home builders, uh, DR Horton, which is one of the That's nation's the one, largest yes. builder, they actually came out and said that this valley was ranked in the top 10 for them in the whole state of California of places to be and to develop as we come out of this recession. Really? Well, that's exciting news for you and for the city of San Jacinto. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Andrew, for being with us. We appreciate the uh, update of everything that's happening and it's good to hear positive news. My so, pleasure. Thank <laughs> you for great. what you're doing for our community and communicating yes. all the news. Thank you. We'll be right back with more of the show right after this. Hi, I'm Phil. I'm a technician that hates acting, but as they say, it's not just about me. It's about our ASE certified master technicians, Ed Garcia and Steve Maldonado. It's about our hybrid battery rebuilder, Marco Sarvaio. It's about our friendly and helpful service advisors, Dan and Brian. It's about our Auto Club approved service. Check out our website for more at philsautoonline.com. Phil's Auto Clinic, where caring makes the difference. I'm Nancy Connie, and I'm from an organization called Sky Hunters. We're in San Diego, and we're a rescue facility. We take care of sick, injured, and orphaned native wildlife, specializing in raptors. And all the birds I brought to share with you today are non-releasable. We have state fish and game permits and U.S. federal fish and wildlife. And we like to share the birds with the public and let them know that there are rescue groups out there. A lot of people will find an animal, not know what to do, and uh, so this is a great way for us to educate the public on what to do and not do if you find a sick, injured, or orphaned wild animal. Our goal is giving wildlife a second chance. A lot of them get injured, 
by BB guns and pellet guns, poison rodents, loss of habitat. And these birds are federally protected by our government. It's against the law to take an egg out of a nest, a baby, or to have any wildlife in your possession. And if you were to get caught, it's a great big fine, about 25,000 bucks. Because these animals belong free, not in some little wire cage in somebody's backyard or garage. If you'd like more information, we have a website, skyhunters.org. And uh, we are networking with all the rehabilitation groups here in Southern California. So feel free to look us up, give us a call, 619-445-6565. And welcome back. And as we close the show, we want to be sure and remind you to get out and see the 89th season of the Ramona Pageant since 1923, Cesaria. That's right, Nancy. And of course, Nancy and I have both been very directly involved with Ramona, both of us portraying the lead heroine a number of times. And I can guarantee you will not see another theatrical production like this anywhere on this that earth. Is so true. It is one of a kind. And we know that there's a lot of brand new people here to our valleys. So get up there, bring your family, bring your friends. It is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And don't forget all of the activities that's going to be happening prior to that on April 14th. I mean, we have a parade and we just have all kinds of neat activities and fun things to get you all excited and get you up there. And we can get tickets at? You can get tickets by going to RamonaBowl.com or just give a call right up there to the bowl. That's right. And speaking of websites, don't forget to go on our website, thevalleyconnection.net, where you can see this show again or any previous shows. Thank you for joining us, and please join us again for more of The Valley Connection.